Hey everyone, so this uh, lesson is on correlation and regression. Specifically, we'll be talking about uh, linear regression and uh, the, the correlation associated with that. Uh, so to get into that, we'll need a brief review of uh, the equation of a line. Okay? So a line is represented with uh, this form of the equation, y equals mx plus b. Okay, where m is called the slope because it represents how steep your line is and if it's moving upwards or downwards. And b is called the y-intercept and essentially what your y-intercept is, it is your starting point of the line. It's called the y-intercept because it's where the line touches the y-axis. And why it touches the y-axis there because that's the value of your line when your x value is zero. So for an example, let's say our line looks like this, 2x plus 3. Okay, so what that means, that means that our m value, our slope is 2, and our y-intercept is 3. Now, if we start uh, plugging values in for x, and we look at y, y values we get, we get what looks like this. So if x is equal to 0, y is equal to 2 times 0 plus 3, which is 3. Okay, if x is equal to 1, then y is 2 times 1 plus 3, which is 2 plus 3, which is 5. If x is equal to 2, y is 2 times 2 plus 3, which is 4 plus 3, which is 7. If x is equal to 3, so you see the pattern here, 2 times 3 plus 3, 6 plus 3 is 9. And if it's equal, if x is equal to 4, 2 times 4 plus 3, which is 8 plus 3, which is 11, okay? Now, if you look at these values here, okay, look at the difference between all the values. It's always 2. We're always adding 2. Okay, 3 plus 2 is 5, plus another 2 is 7, plus another 2 is 9, plus another 2 is 11. That's how much our y value increases if x goes up by 1. That's our slope. Okay, it's increasing by 2 each time because we're multiplying by 2 whatever the x value is. Right, the number of 2s is increasing by 1 each time x increases by 1. You'll also notice that our starting value is 3, okay? And that's because that's our y-intercept, okay? In the equation, that's the value that does not multiply x. So when x is 0, all we have is that 3, okay? Now, we're going to go into Excel, and I'll show you what that looks like. So, if you recall, the equation of our line was 2x plus 3. So we had our slope, we had our y-intercept, which are equal to 2 and 3, respectively. I'm just going to put a box around that and highlight it, because we'll be using that. Okay. Now, we're going to create our x values and our y values. So x values, we're going to start from 0, and we're just going to have a whole lot of x values here. And our y values, if you remember, y equals m x plus b. I'll just write that here. So we're going to write down y equals 
m times the x value plus the b value. Now the m value and the b value, that's not going to change. If we're sticking to the same line, the m value and the b value stays the same. So we're going to make sure those remain constant as we copy and paste the line by putting those dollar signs there. The x value, that's going to change, so we're not going to put the dollar signs there. And we can copy and paste this. And you see it's the same line that we just saw written. 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. Okay. And now we see why this relationship is called a line. Because when we plot the x values versus the y values, that's what we get. We get these points that form a straight line. Okay, so there's our point where x is 0 and y is 3. There's our point x is 1, y is 5. There's our point x is 2, y is 7, and so on. Okay, now here our slope is 2. Now watch what happens when I make the slope 5. Okay, Excel automatically changes the axis, right? And so our line looks the same because the axes are the same. Okay, now we're going to keep the, because the axes are different. Now we're going to keep the axes the same so we can actually say, see that change. And so you got to keep in mind how steep a line looks depends on what your axes are. Right now it's from 0 to 30. Right? If I change the slope to a 5, our line is actually increasing faster. It's going 3, 8, 13, 18, 23. But because our axis here now goes all the way up to 70, it looks just as steep. Okay, so always keep in mind, you got to look at the axis to understand the relationship that you're being shown on a graph. Now I'm going to change this back to a 2. I'm going to fix the axis. Okay, so I'm going to fix it. So this is a negative 10. And the maximum, we're going to keep it at 50. Actually, we're going to make it 50. There we go. So now it's not going to change. We see our slope of 2. Now I'm going to change the, sl the slope to 5. And now the line is steeper. Notice the starting point is still 3. Okay. There's your slope of 5. There's your slope of 2. The starting point is still 3. Right? We never change the y-intercept. But everything else changes. It's not going up by 2s anymore. Now it's going up by 5s. 3 plus 5 is 8, 8 plus 5 is 13, 13 plus 5 is 18, and so on. Now if I change the slope to a negative 1, we're still starting at 3, but now we're going down by 1. 3 minus 1 is 2, 2 minus 1 is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, 0 minus 1 is negative 1, and so on. Okay, so with a negative slope, your line is going downwards. Okay, now I'll actually change the y-intercept. Instead of a 3, let's make it 20. So you see the line is just as steep because the slope is still negative 1, but it just shifted upward. Instead of the starting point being 3, now the starting point is 20. Okay, now I'll make the starting point 30. Again, the line is just as steep, right? It's still going down by 1 each time, but the starting point is now 30. Now let's make it steeper. I'm going to make it negative 4. Now it's steeper. Okay. Now I'm going to make it negative 15. Okay. Now it's so steep you can't see most of the points. All right. Let's make it negative 7. Okay. A little bit less steep. Negative 5. Even less steep. Negative 2. Even less steep. If I make that slope 0. Well, then there's no slope at all. It's just equal to the starting point, which is 30 the whole time. Now make the slope 1, make the slope 3, right? It's getting steeper. Make the slope 6. Okay, now it's so steep you cannot see most of the points. Now I'll make the y-intercept smaller. Instead of 30, I'll make it 10. Well, there we go. Same steepness, but the line slopes down a bit. Okay? Now, lines 
is one type of relationship that a phenomena could have. Right? For example, someone is making a certain amount of dollars an hour. Right? Let's say they make $15 an hour and they start off with $50 in their pocket and X represents how many hours they worked. Right? So with each hour, the amount of money they gain increases, the amount of money they have increases by $15. Okay? Now we can't see it on the graph right now, so we're going to format the axis again. And then we can actually see the line, right? Now, if they started off not with 50 in their pocket, but with 100 in their pocket, well, the line is just as steep, but it's shifted upward. If they're making not $15 an hour, but $20 an hour, well, now that line is steeper, okay? Let's say they're spending money, right? They have $100 in their pocket. Uh, maybe they're at a casino, okay, and they're spending... $10 an hour, sorry, negative, because they're spending the money. Okay, now you see the amount of money they have is sloping down, okay? Now, most of the data that you collect will not be linear, okay? Because there are a lot of random factors con uh, controlling the data that you collect. But it could follow what's called a linear regression. I'm just going to call this first column y1, and now we're going to have a second column here, y2. All right, and I'm going to bring this back to our uh, slope of 2 and y-intercept of 3, and I'm going to bring the axis back to what it was before, around what it was before. Okay, so let's say we collect some data. And it looks like this. And we're going to graph it. Okay, so there's our data right here, these orange points, all right? Now, a lot of the data you collect, okay, will trend upwards or it may trend downwards. And you can use predictions, you can make predictions with that trend by what's called a linear regression, which is creating a line that fits through those points, okay? So... You can right click and select add trend line. And then a menu will pop up where you can select display equation on chart and display R squared value, which we'll talk about soon. And then your chart shows these values. Okay, so we have Y equals 0.4755X plus 3.0513. That's the equation of a line. It's actually the equation of the line that passes through all of these points. Now there's many lines that you could draw through these points, but only one of those lines is what's called the line of best fit. And what makes it the line of best fit is you're optimizing to make sure the distance between the actual data points and that line is as small as it could possibly be. Okay, and once you get a line that creates that minimum distance between all of those data points and that line, you call that the line of best fit. Okay, now we won't get into how that line is calculated. How do you get the y-intercept? How do you get the slope? I'll show you how Excel does that, and that's what we just did. Okay, so your data points are not directly on this line, but the phenomena that these data points represent are represented by this line. 